Hello and welcome back to the Cracking Tang YouTube channel. Today we're solving lead code problem 687, longest univalue path. Given the root of a binary tree, return the length of the longest path where each node in the path has the same value. This path may or may not pass through the root. The length of the path between two nodes is represented by the number of edges between them. Let's look at some examples. We have this tree, 5, 5, 5, 4, 1, 1. So what is the longest path? Obviously we can see that it's gonna be these three fives here because this is all one path and all of them are five. There's really no other path. There is just the one node one, the one node um, one here, but we can't connect them because of the four. So that means that that can't be the longest path. This four is on its own because this is a one, this is a one, this is a five. So the only one is this five here. Uh, similar here, we have the tree at one, four, 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 five, five. So the fi two fives are together, but because they're the one, obviously we can't link them. Same with um, this four here, obviously we can't go this way, um, but we actually can link these four because you know this one is the subtree of this, this is also the subtree, and then we can link it in the parent. So again, this is one of those questions where it's really easy to look at the problem and figure it out, but coding it up, um, it's a little bit trickier. Luckily, this is following the kind of same DFS pattern that we see uh, very commonly, where essentially we just, uh, oops, we go to the leaves and then work our way up. So what we wanna do is we're going to basically write a DFS function. And in this DFS function, we're going to go all the way down to the leaves at which point we will start returning up to the parent. Now, what do we want to return to the parent at each call to our DFS? We want to return the value of that last child node um, from the left side and the right side. So we're gonna have the left value and we're gonna have the right value and these will be two separate calls to our DFS function. What else will we need? Well, we also wanna keep track of the longest univalue path we've seen. So we're gonna return the left value and L longest. And what left longest is gonna represent is the longest univalue path from the le uh, left side. And the same thing, we're gonna have it from the right side. So for example, when we get to this leaf node here, obviously it's a leaf node, so it doesn't have any children. So a leaf can be its own path. So from this one, we would return what? A, the value of five and also the length of the path, which is one, which is just that node. Five would call uh, it parent, which had called, um, it will get nothing from the left because it's empty and it would get uh, from the right, the value of five and one. <clears throat> now when we're at the parent and we've called the DFS on the children, we're going to check is the current value five equal to um, either of the children? If it is, then we can basically add um, that one, right? So we can basically say, okay, well we now have a longer path. So we add one to whatever side matched. If they both match, then we have to make a decision. We can either take the child here uh, in the same way that we have in this one, but we actually can't go higher up in the tree uh, because that will not uh, be allowed, right? We cannot um, just do like four, four, and then continue up in the tree. If we take something, uh, a parent node, we have to use whatever's in its left child, uh, left subtree and right subtree. We can't then go further up in the tree. So we'll have to make a decision when that happens uh, and basically just update our solution. And it could be a temporarily best solution. If not, we still need to go up with whatever side is longer, the right or the left. So we'll pick one and then continue up the tree in case there's actually a better solution. So pretty standard. Um, we do these problems all the time. We go to the leaves, do something with the leaves and then start bubbling up the recursion until we get to the end and simply return the best uh, value we've seen. And all we need to do is keep track of the, the value from the left uh, subtree that we've just seen um, when we call our DFS and also the long, uh, length of the longest uh, univalue path in the left side and then the right side. Now that's enough blabbing. Drawing these like lines, it's getting a bit confusing. Let's actually go to the code editor, type this up. You'll see that it's quite simple and we'll handle all of the cases uh, for determining, do we wanna use the left side? Do we wanna use the right side? Both of them, what do we do here? Let's go to the code editor and type it up. Let's code this up. I just realized that uh, when we were going over the intuition, I actually made a mistake. If we look at the problem here, um, this length 
this path is actually not um, three, it's two. It's actually, we define the, the length of the path by the edges between them, not the number of nodes. So obviously there's two edges uh, here and that's why it's two. And same with this one, there's two, it shouldn't be three. I, for some reason, I thought it was the number of nodes in the path. It's actually the number of edges in the path, which is fine. The logic will be the same. I just, hopefully I didn't confuse some of you guys because I said three, but it said two in the answer. Okay, let's actually code this up. First thing we want to do is actually make sure that our root is not empty. If it is, then we can't do anything. So we just return zero. We're going to say if not root, uh, then let's just return uh, zero. <clears throat> now let's create a variable to store our longest path. So we'll call this self.res and we'll put it as zero for now. Uh, we're going to call a DFS function on our root and we'll define that in a second. And that will basically go through our um, logic and update res as we go along. And then the last thing we need to do is simply return self.res. Cool. Now let's actually define the DFS function. So we're going to take self and we're going to take a node. Now remember a node um, can basically be uh, empty. It can be a leaf node or it can be just a regular node that has uh, one or more children. So let's handle each case uh, one by one. So we're going to say if not node, then obviously there's nothing to do here and remember that we're going to return the uh, val of the node and the length of the longest uh, uni value from that node so obviously if there's no node then we just simply return uh, nothing right so we're going to return float uh, minus infinity for, for the um, the value here and we're also going to return uh, zero because obviously there is no node we can't form a path Otherwise, if we have a leaf node, and this is going to be when node.left and node.right are both empty, so sorry, uh, let's see, if not node.left, there we go, and not node.right, so if both of these are null, then we know that it's a, um, a leaf node, um, so we can simply return the value of the node and zero, because like I said earlier, um, it's not based on the number of nodes, it's actually the edges. So we actually haven't seen any um, edges yet, so the length of the longest path is zero. Okay, now what we want to do is actually process uh, the left subtree and the right subtree of our current node, now that we established that it's not empty and that it's not a leaf node. So remember that when we call DFS, it returns a value for the um, immediate child's value, and it also returns a um, length of the longest path. So we're gonna say the left value, which is equal to node.left.val. <clears throat> uh, left val, and then the left longest is gonna be the result of calling, oops, self.dfs on node.left. And the same thing for the right. So we're gonna say right val, right longest equals to self.dfs of node.right. Okay, cool, now we need to actually handle um, these values. And there's actually four cases we can do here. So the first case is when left val actually equals right val. So in this case, we want to basically form the tree of basically taking left val and right val and then linking them with our current uh, parent. So we're going to say if left val equals to uh, right val, equals to node.val, <clears throat> we're gonna say that self.res is gonna be the maximum of whatever the current self.res is, and then two plus the longest on the left plus the longest on the right. Now, where does this two come from? Remember that we get an edge when we get, um, when we link uh, a node, right? And there's obviously we're taking the right and the left. So as you can see here, this would be the case where we take this left subtree and then the right subtree, sorry, the left subtree and the right subtree. So obviously then we get two um, edges between them. So we add two plus whatever the length of the longest path of each one of these is. Obviously they're leaf nodes here, so it's zero. So it'd just be two for this one, which is actually the solution here. Okay, so that's where the two comes from. So if they're not equal, then we basically want to um, check whether or not one of the uh, children actually equals to node.val because that means that we can actually continue up the tree, which is the case that we saw um, here in this example where we're taking the right side, we can ignore the left and we can just take the, the right and try to go actually higher in the tree. So 
let's handle both of those cases. We're going to say else if the left val equals to no dot val. So we've already established that um, these three don't equal each other. So now we're just going to check the right and the left separately to see if they equal each other. So we're going to say, does the left val equal no dot val? Uh, if it does, then we're going to say self dot res is again the maximum of whatever the current result is. And one plus the left longest. So the reason we do left longest is because we're obviously looking at the left subtree. Now we've, we don't want to, we don't care about the right tree uh, in this case. Uh, actually, we forgot to return something from this side. So actually we want to return, what do we want to do? So obviously we return the current no.val. Now we have to decide what we want to do when we go up the tree, because as we saw, if you choose to terminate at a parent and take its left and right child, that's it. You cannot go further up in the tree. You can only take one side and then go further up in the tree. I couldn't take four, four, four here. And then if there was another four, try to link them up. That doesn't work. You have to pick one. So that's why we did the update here in case this is actually the best solution. Um, we're going to take it greedily and then, but we still need to proceed up the tree with whatever the best current solution is. So we're going to return node.val because that's the current value of our node. And we're going to return one plus max of left longest and right longest. So we want to optimize here. So obviously one, because we need to link the parent with either the left or the right. And we're going to take which one's longer, um, for obvious reasons. Okay. So the same thing here, except now we know that the left is longer, so we don't have to um, make this maximum here. We can simply just return node.val and we can return one plus the left longest. Uh, let's see, L longest. Okay, now similarly for the right tree, we can say if right val equals to node.val, then we can say self.res, oops. I can't type today equals uh, max self dot res. So whatever the current result is, and then one plus the right longest path. <clears throat> and then again, we simply just return from here, no dot val, and we return one plus the right longest. Cool. Um, yeah. And then the last case is when there is uh, nothing that equals to the current node, which means that we cannot use the left subtree and the right or the right subtree because then we can't form the path. We can only do it if they're the uni value, right? So we simply return uh, node.val and zero because we have no path yet. And that's it. That's the DFS function. Pretty straightforward. It's one of those where we just return, um, you know, something from the children. And then in this case, there's quite a few cases you need to consider, unfortunately. Uh, but we have seen this kind of problem before. Anyway, let's run this, make sure we didn't make any sin silly mistakes, submit it and accept it. Perfect. Okay, so what is the time and space complexity of our algorithm? So in this algorithm, we need to process every single node once and only once, which means that uh, because of our DFS, our time complexity is going to be big O of n, uh, where n is the height of the tree. Okay. Sorry, the not the height of the tree, the number of nodes in the tree. Okay. Uh, for the space complexity, even though we don't define any extra space here, because we have recursion, um, in the worst case, our tree will just be like a linked list. So basically think of it as starting from the root and then like only right nodes or only left nodes. In that case, our recursion is going to basically just be n um, again. So where n is the number of nodes in the tree because we need to count the uh, recursive stack frames. So uh, recursive stack frames. Okay, so that is how you solve longest uni value path. Definitely a weird question. Um, it is like a standard DFS template, but you actually have to do quite a few comparisons here and taking like the local maximum, which might be the global maximum, but you don't know, which is why you have to um, take it, but then also proceed up the tree with only half of the subtree. It's it, it can be a little bit confusing, but um, relatively straightforward. So hopefully this video helps if you were stuck on this question. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and a comment, subscribe to the channel to help me reach 10,000 subs, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.